Austria, a small city in Germany filled with Roman ruins, Karl Marx memorabilia, little religious statues, and big feet. A great city to study in, live in, and travel to Luxembourg to earn more money. But you're moving out. I mean, I'm moving... Wait. Moving is so stressful. Well, unless you have money to pay people to do it for you. But I don't, and I have so many things. Most of my furniture I decided to put on eBay, since I have no idea where I'm going next. And I'm not sure if I need the furniture. And it's definitely gonna be a hassle to deconstruct it and move it. Matter of fact, today someone's gonna pick up the wardrobe. And that means today, finally, I can look through my clothes and get rid of things that I don't like and don't fit me anymore. But first, we need to take care of this. In my makeover video, two people suggested to put wallpaper on the back of my wardrobe. Which is a great idea. I didn't feel like buying wallpaper, so I took some posters around town, put them on my wardrobe and called it a day. And I think it looks nice. But now I need to strip it all down and throw it away. And now it looks naked and vulnerable. Maybe I should censor this. I have a lot of dresses that I don't wear that often and these Guinness uniforms. But I think one of the dresses I'll try and make it into a skirt. I couldn't manage to look through all my stuff because the buyers came 20 minutes early. So we basically took everything out and dumped it all on the bed. And now it looks empty, but at least there's a lot of light and there's much more space. Just don't look at the bed. Look away. I continued sorting through my things and I managed to find two chapsticks that I thought I lost forever. And now I have six or five. I continued sorting through my clothes. And we managed to get four bags of clothing that is still acceptable to give away. And we went and dumped them into those big containers. Later that day, I started packing other stuff into boxes. And the whole process consisted of me of packing, thinking about life, and dancing. Plus looking through things and thinking if I really need them. Like this hot dog calendar that I made. It's a long story. The next day packing continues with plenty more of chaos. I'm starting with the kitchen since someone's gonna come around and pick up the kitchen today. If you're wondering how much we're selling the kitchen for, it's free. We have to get rid of it. We have nowhere to put it. And the best way to do it is to give it out for free. I think originally we bought the kitchen for 150 or 200 euros. We got a stove and a sink and a lot of wood. We also got a dishwasher, but two months ago or so it broke. And it was a very sad day. After hours of cleaning and dancing, the kitchen finally looks clean and empty. Nice, clean and empty. And then we have the other side. Yeah. In the late afternoon, the kitchen was being disassembled piece by piece and carried far, far away. In the meantime, I was struggling to make any sense of this mess. But the one thing that I certainly can do is to make the famous free-to-take box. Put all the stuff that's unneeded or doesn't bring you any joy in a box and label it as free. And a lot of the stuff that I'm putting here is actually from boxes like this. It served its purpose and it's time to pass it to another person. I wish we had a bigger box. Just after a couple of hours, some stuff was already gone. And the next day it was wiped clean. It's gone! Oh I just wanted to put some more stuff in it. It hasn't even been 12 hours. Yeah. We sold most of my furniture in a span of two weeks. The bed, the nightstand, the closet, the Ikea shelf, plus the kitchen and the fridge. With a cup full of energy, we took a little detour to the Home Depot. We had to buy some paint and hole fillers to fix any visual mistakes that our apartment has. Plus, I did some extra shopping on the side. The lady on the swing and the other lady on the swing. I need a lot of new things, like a new wallet, new eyeliner. It's so ugly. It's so washed out already. New sunscreen, but I don't know which one is good. So I'll just buy an expensive one, I guess and other small things. I also fell in love with these glasses. I still think about them till this day. They make me feel like young gravy, but they were 25 euros, so I had to put them back. And lastly, I had a secret order from an unverifiable location for some American LaCroix. 
for the past few days without the kitchen, we're enjoying the liberty of going out to eat. The one year that we lived here, we didn't go to many places, since it's expensive. And that's it, that's the main reason. So now I feel like not having a kitchen is a good reason to go out and eat somewhere else. We went to Dean and David for some good old pricey poke bowls, got some fast food fries and bakery breads, fancy but not so fancy German food, and good old Dare Daddy. Honestly, one of the best burger places in Trier. I think I know exactly what I want. You know exactly what you want. I want this one. The PB and J? Yeah. I was very skeptical about this, and I love peanut butter and jelly. But in a burger? Sounds kind of wrong. I didn't think it would taste good, but it blew my socks off. It was just fantastic. It's really good. Nice. It didn't feel like eating a burger, but it was incredibly filling. Time to get everything out of the apartment into cars. The process lasted for about two days. Not because it was difficult, but just for timing purposes. We painted the walls, took out the nails, oh, I got it. filled in the holes, and we only kept the bare necessities, like this water cooker and a bed, since we're leaving tomorrow. But before we leave, we need to discuss my favorite and least favorite things about Tria. First up on our list is the walkability. It's a positive thing. The ability to take long walks along the Mosul. This is my primary form of exercise. Since gyms are too expensive or they force you to have a year-long membership. So you can choose to walk along the peaceful path or the one right next to the cars, which for some reason I usually take. Often with my headphones in listening to Doji Cat, Joji or Baby No Money, or other songs that blew up on TikTok. You can enjoy the not so far away mountains and houses on the other side, as well as this grand Budapest looking like building from a Wes Anderson movie. Then, even though at some parts the city looks pretty gray, sometimes you can stumble upon very colorful graffiti. I think it's mainly outside the city center. But my favorite corner of the city to walk through is this street. This is the type of street that is romanticized in books and movies. It looks so colorful, elegant and peaceful, making you feel like you're the main protagonist in your life. Why is she so mad? She's carrying an entire house. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Then knowing to speak German is a big part of German culture. And now it's the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Lingoda. Langora is an online language school that offers classes 24-7 and they're most known for their sprints. If you sign up and commit doing classes for two months every single day, you get 100% of your money back. But if this sounds a bit too intensive for you, you can also do classes for two months every other day and get 50% of your money back. It's a great challenge not only for you to improve your language, but also for your bank account. And if you're not too sure about the platform yet, they also offer a 7-day free trial. The classes are very flexible, you can book anytime, anywhere, and you don't have to buy any books. And during the lessons, the main focus is on speaking. If you live in a big city like Berlin, sometimes it's hard to find opportunities to practice the language since you're surrounded by an international environment. Personally, I don't really get to practice German that often unless I'm ordering a pudding pretzel. Oftentimes, if someone's talking to me, I can more or less understand what they're talking about, but I find it hard to give an actual answer. But with Lingoda, they guide you through the topic and encourage you to speak as much as possible. Plus give you feedback if you said something wrong. So if you're looking to improve your French, German, Spanish, English skills, then Lingoda is the place to be. Consider checking them out and use my link to get a little discount. Next up on my list is the secret pathway to the Tria shopping mall. Well, it's not really a secret if you own a car, because it's where a lot of people park their car, but it does make me feel as if I took that one book from the bookshelf and opened a whole new door. You can either go through the bottom or through the top. Then Tria has many beautiful buildings, but I believe I have found the most underrated building of all, which is this one. I think it's a school, maybe? A gymnasium, maybe? But it looks very beautiful, and I had to mention it somewhere. Last but not least, something not really correlated to the city, but I discovered it here. This chocolate from Aldi. It's not too sweet nor too bitter, and it has many fun flavors. A perfect treat after dessert. I mean dinner. Now let's move on to the least favorite things. First of all, why is there only an H&M Kids? I'm not a huge fan of H&M, but this just confuses me. Then my favorite statue 
yes, favorite, in Tria, is this beautiful masterpiece of metal. The problem is, it's not a statue, but it's a fountain. And I don't know who decided to make it a fountain, but they need to be punished. It just looks like blood, sweat and tears. Does not look appealing at all. Helicopters. And my last but not least complaint is the traffic lights. The second worst traffic light in Tria is this one, at the Karl Marx Strasse, right next to Nakov. You have to wait for quite a while for it to turn green, and when it does turn green, halfway across the street is already red. It feels like it doesn't even give you a chance to cross the street. But the top price for the worst traffic light goes to this one. It takes way too long for you to cross the street, especially if you're standing on the wrong side. It's kind of confusing to explain how they work, so I have this footage sped up and hopefully you'll understand. Perhaps. Finally, Jesus Christ. And it's already red. It's green. The day has come. The day came. We're taking our little dirty naked mattress to the car to complete our Tetris build. Look at that. The apartment looks brand new and it is emptier than... What's a good metaphor? Um, and it is emptier than a used jar of peanut butter. <sighs> I don't think this makes sense. We locked our doors up the final time. I started tearing up a little bit. But that didn't last long. And we drove off into the sunset. And by sunset, I mean rain. Honestly, I can't believe it's been a year since I moved to Tria. I think generally after a year you feel fully settled in. You found your favorite spots, you made some friends, and you start to feel like home. A year also lets you experience the city through all the holidays and seasons. And Tria had a surprisingly nice Christmas market. As I probably mentioned before, Tria is not a big city. So the disadvantage is that there's not much to do and there's not many job opportunities, unless you work in Luxembourg. But a big benefit is that it's not too crowded and there's a lot of nature around. I always wondered what it would be like to live in Germany. And Tria was not on my list of cities I wanted to visit or even live in, because frankly, I didn't know it existed. But an opportunity to move appeared my way and I hopped on that train. Choo choo! It is. Do you think I should show this in the video? I never showed the, the window. 